Japan's Ministry of Health will conduct an in-depth study of workers at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. Questions remain how they were affected by radiation from the 2011 nuclear accident. Some 30,000 workers so far have been assigned to decommission the damaged reactors. The ministry has already conducted medical checks of about 19,000 workers who entered the plant just after the accident. The results were recorded in a database. But the database does not include radiation exposure levels before the accident or details of lifestyle habits, such as smoking. If workers develop cancer or cataracts, it would be difficult to determine the impact from radiation. The ministry will set up a panel of radiologists and other experts to determine the study contents. A report will be presented around May. Ministry officials say they hope to start a study based on the report next year. Politicians in Japan are trying to find common ground on a plan to temporarily store highly radioactive debris from the cleanup of the 2011 nuclear accident. Central government leaders want to build three facilities in Fukushima to store the waste, but the governor of the prefecture is pushing for two. Yuhei Sato spoke to, on Wednesday about the central government storage plan which came out in December. The proposal calls for intermediate storage facilities to be built in the towns of Okuma, Futaba, and Naraha. The government would buy 19 square kilometers of land in the municipalities. However, Governor Sato says he'll suggest dropping Naraha from the plan. It's best if the storage space is kept as small as possible in order to make progress in rebuilding areas around Fukushima Daiichi. Sato says officials from Okuma and Futaba have told him that all the municipalities around the plant should discuss the disposal issue separately from whether they will accept the storage facilities. The governor says he wants to hear from them soon. Officials in Naraha have already rejected accepting the radioactive debris, which includes leaves, branches and other vegetation collected during the decontamination work. They say they're preparing to allow former residents return once radiation levels are deemed safe. Governor Sato says he'll ask central government leaders to discuss an alternative storage plan after making arrangements with mayors of municipalities around the plant. Asian tourists are getting a chance to enjoy Japanese cultural activities at the Hakone Hot Spring Resort area near Tokyo for the Lunar New Year holiday. <laughs> Japanese traditional female entertainers called Geiko welcomed tourists from China, Thailand and other countries with dances and song. 
the foreign sightseers experienced traditional Japanese calligraphy and took photos with a man dressed in a samurai costume. I enjoyed the beautiful town and landscape. I'm grateful for the chance to view Japan's traditional culture. I think this is a good experience. An official in charge of the event says he wants tourists from East Asia to enjoy Japan's attractiveness. People in a port in northern Japan have prayed for a good catch of cod and safe fishing. Tuesday is the beginning of spring on the old Japanese calendar, and fishermen in the city of Nikaho in Akita Prefecture mark the day by holding a special festival. The community first held the event some 300 years ago. Fishermen prepared about 40 cod each, weighing more than 10 kilograms to display at the festival. Fishermen and children paraded from the port to a shrine two kilometers away with the cod hoisted on bamboo poles. They hung the cod in the shrine grounds and prayed for a good catch this year. I'm happy that we could prepare cod to offer at the shrine. Local fishermen have been able to go fishing only half the usual number of days so far this season because of rough seas. Researchers at the World Health Organization warned the number of cancer patients around the globe could rise sharply, especially in developing countries. WHO researchers say the number of new cancer cases could rise more than 50 percent to 22 million a year in the next two decades. They published the report ahead of World Cancer Day on Tuesday. They say more people in developing countries will likely get cancer as their lifestyle changes. WHO researchers note that more than 60 percent of new cases of cancer are in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. They want governments in those regions to do more to prevent the disease and to detect it early. Researchers say one way of doing that is to make it easier for people to get health checks. They also say raising tobacco prices and regulating sales of sugary soft drinks and alcohol would help cut the risk. <laughs> have one of the fastest growing economies in the world. They've seen double digit growth for the past three years. Foreign investors have seen an opportunity. More and more companies from Japan are operating in the country. And one is trying to get people to develop a taste for a Japanese staple. NHK World's Tomoki Matsuda has the story. Kimihiro Ito is a rice wholesaler in Niigata, north of Tokyo. He has come to Ranbato to research how people here might enjoy Japanese rice. Conveyor belt sushi may be pricey because all the ingredients have to be imported. Even so, it's catching on fast among newly affluent Mongolians. I love sushi. Recently, I've been eating Japanese food a lot. It's really popular. Demand is high, so there's plenty of opportunity here. Even so, it all still has challenges ahead. Rice doesn't grow in Mongolia, so it's all imported. The South Korean and Chinese version is available, but it's less than half the price of Ito's premium quality product. And although rice has become very popular, Mongolians usually mix in salt and oil to season it. Prepared like that, all rice tends to taste the same. 
Ito realized the way to get Mongolian people to buy his more expensive premium rice was to show them how delicious it tastes plain, the way it's eaten in Japan. So he brought over a Mongolian trainee, Soldier Girl, to Niigata for three months to understand the way rice is eaten in Japan. This is a trainee from Mongolia who is working with us. Zorujar Gar wrote detailed instructions in Mongolian for eating and cooking the rice to be printed on the bags. In December, it all celebrated a new joint venture with local investors. He opened the first rice polishing plant ever built in Mongolia. Instead of shipping white rice from Japan, he's polishing it on site. That way, it will really taste good. He gives out samples to potential customers. This is premium rice from Niigata. This rice, well, I have to say it's very good quality. I look forward to working with you. Ito is also keen for local supermarket shoppers to taste the rice. He hands out rice balls made from the fresh milled grain. Zorjalga also explains the Japanese style of cooking rice. This is how it tastes when it's freshly milled. It's delicious. I've never eaten fleshly meal rice before. It tastes great. If Japanese rice farmers and distributors continue with these efforts to improve the quality of rice and publicize it more, they should be well received in the Mongolian markets. By next year, Ito aims to export 500 tons of his premium Niigata rice, up from 300 tons this year. The U.S. Navy is investigating allegations of cheating on exams at a training facility for nuclear-powered submarine operators. The chief of naval operations revealed at a news conference that officers at the facility in South Carolina may have cheated on a regular written exam designed to maintain their proficiency. U.S. media reports say around 30 people have been involved. To say that I'm disappointed would be an understatement uh, whenever I hear about integrity issues. Uh, it's disruptive to our unit's success. U.S. Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel gave a direct order to the Navy to look into the scandal, which is the second to hit the country's military this year. Last month, the U.S. Air Force found that more than 90 officers had cheated on a proficiency exam for the operation of intercontinental ballistic missiles capable of carrying nuclear warheads.